QuickBooks Enterprise 2021. Two businesses and personal bookkeeping in one QuickBooks file using classes. Inventory tracking overview. It's time to boldly account where no accountant has accounted before with QuickBooks Enterprise 2021. Here we are in our practice file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting the open windows list. In prior presentations, we set up our practice file. We set up our classes so that we can track our data by class, by location with two different locations or two different businesses and the personal file in one QuickBooks file with the use of the classes. We then went over the revenue cycle and the vendor cycle. Now we want to throw in inventory. So if we're going to put inventory into the system and we would like to actually track the inventory through QuickBooks, that's going to add a level of complexity, both on the purchasing side of things and even more so more complexity, most likely on the customer side of things. Now, if we're adding inventory and we have like two locations or two businesses and then the personal file, obviously we're not dealing with inventory for the personal side of things. So it's not going to affect that class. But if we have multiple locations or multiple businesses that deal with inventory and which we would like to track the inventory within the QuickBooks system, that can add a level of complexity. Now, if we only have one uh, area or one of the businesses of the two that are tracking inventory, for example, if we have one business that's basically dealing with just uh, gig work or something like that, then it's not going to have inventory possibly if we're, if we're dealing with just we're getting paid for something that we're going to do uh, during contracting work or something like that, we may not have inventory involved in it. And then the other job maybe we do, then it will be a little bit easier because then we can track inventory and we know that anything related to inventory will be tied to the one business that will be dealing with inventory. If you have two businesses that are tracking inventory and you're applying them to the one QuickBooks file, then again, that can add a level of complexity to it as well. So let's start with basically the first situation. Let's think about we have one of the two businesses has inventory we want to track that inventory in quickbooks system using a perpetual inventory system and then what we put we might move on to like two uh inventory uh two businesses tracking different inventory so let's go up top and say that uh, we're going to turn on like let's check out the the uh preferences to make sure we have the preferences on to track inventory by going to the edit drop down then go on down to the preferences we want to be taking a look at the inventory items that is here, items and inventory. We want to then be on the company preferences. So we're going to be on over in the company preferences. Then we have the inventory and purchase orders are active. They are not currently active. I'm going to check it off and say we want the inventory purchase orders on. Warn about duplicate purchase orders. We're going to keep that. Uh, when calculating quantity available for my inventory, deduct quantity reserve uh, for pending bills and quantity on sales orders. We're going to keep that then as is. And then we have a warning if there's not enough inventory. So now let's take a look at the advanced features. These are going to be some of these available only in the enterprise version. If you're using the QuickBooks uh, Pro or Pro instead of enterprise, then you're going to be using an average inventory method. A flow assumption would be basically average. Note that when you're using uh, the enterprise, you have more options related to inventory, which might go into more detail later. But one of those options is the use of the first in first out. So note that you can then come over here and switch it on over to the first in first out. We're not going to get into a lot of detail with that at this point, but uh, just note that you have that option in enterprise, not the case in uh, pro. We'll keep it on the default. So, so it'll line up kind of with pro as well. So I'm going to go ahead and then say, okay. And QuickBooks must close all the windows. So it's going to close all the windows. I'm going to say, all right, close all the windows if you have to. And then we're going to go to the company dropdown, turn the home page back on. And so now we've got the home page back on and inventory should now be uploaded. We have this tracking field up top, which is typically the format that we use to track the inventory up top, meaning we might have purchase orders that we would be utilizing in order to, to uh, receive the inventory or request the inventory. Then we'll receive the inventory entering a bill and then we can um, then we can pay for the inventory. So let's go ahead and, and work through that process now. Uh, well, let's first look at the chart of accounts. If I go to the lists drop down, take a look at the chart of accounts, then the accounts related to inventory, we're going to have an asset account that's going to be inventory. And then we'll have our cost of goods sold accounts down here on the expense side of things. So the cost of goods sold on the expense side of things are going to be these accounts. Now they're in a separate category in the five series. So they're going to be in 
uh, the five series. So if we only have one company file that's that's dealing with inventory, one of the classes also has inventory, then we can just keep it as is. If we have two, which we might take a look at next time, then we might have to adjust some of these accounts, add some accounts and whatnot for the for the two businesses and the two different classes that will be set up within them. So for these for these items, then we might want to uh, adjust the class at this point to be going to as a default to the B1, which is going to be the business where we're going to say that we have an inventory in. So I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to edit this item and let's set up the class and say, let's bring this to B1, B1 for the freight. And then this inventory account, I'm going to edit the account. We're going to bring that to B1, B1. And then this one also B1, right click and edit the account. This going then to B1, B1 and save it and close it. And then the, the Lex one, we're going to put all these to B1. We're going to say edit that account. And we're going to say this is going to be B1. So we'll say B1 for the cost of goods sold accounts. So now let's go to the home page and let's go through the, just a normal purchasing process. We can order the purchase order. You may not be using a purchase order depending on you know how you purchase your inventory. Remember, this doesn't affect the financial statements. It's just a request here. So we're going to request the inventory. Then we'll when we get the inventory, we will then record the inventory. So let's say we have a vendor and then this is going to be uh, purchase vendor this is who we purchase from which i'm going to say b1 this is our major vendor that we purchase from i'm going to set them up so let's set them up as a vendor and i'm going to say b1 up top i'm not going to have the b1 down here so that uh, if i did have two businesses then i can separate out b1 and b2 i'm just going to be working with one however now which will be b1 i'm not going to put it down here on the bill because i don't want it to show up on any forms like the purchase order here that might actually go to the vendor and then I'm going to go down to the additional information. We're going to be adding B1 in this field as well. And then let's save it and close it. So there we have that. I'm going to be tabbing, tab, tab. And let's make this on 815. Let's make it, or let's make it 811. And then I'm going to add an item. It needs to be an inventory item. So I'm going to say in, so inventory item one for b1 inventory item one b1 i'm going to say yes and let's set that up now this one's going to be an inventory part this time inventory part for b1 i'll call it the same thing it's going to be an inventory item one for b1 and so i'm going to say the cost we're going to set up as let's say 100 and then we're going to we're going to take it to cost of goods sold which only has one account at this point in time because we're just dealing with inventory for one of the items and the account then is going to the b1 class business one class sales price we're going to say is let's say uh, 200 just to make it easy and then we're going to say the income account income drop down i'm going to be putting this into the sales for b1 once again driven by the fact that we're, we're saying all the inventory is going to be going through the b1 account that account then should be driving the class into the b1 class category so i'm going to say okay and so there we have that let's let's pick up a quantity let's pick up like uh like 50 of these so that'll be five thousand. so what's this going to do uh nothing to the financial statements it's a request so this is going to be a request and then we expect to receive them you know basically in the mail so i'm going to save it and and close it now notice well let's save it and close it here i'm going to say yes save it and close it and then i'm going to go to the purchase or, or to the receive now we're going to imagine we receive it no effect on the financial statements thus far with the purchase order we're going to receive it with a bill then now entering the bill and we're going to be putting it into the accounts payable one because it's dealing with the, the one business the accounts payable for the first business and this is going to be the and we called it purchase vendor b1 and now it says there's an open purchase order so we want to build our our bill with the open purchase order so i'm going to say yes please and then that's the one i'm going to be pulling over now so i'm going to say let's pull that over so there we have it we have the inventory item it's in the items tab rather than the expenses tab notice it didn't bring over the class because the the item here is not driving the class we're driven by accounts and so the fact that we have the item here is, is not picking up the class so we'd have to manually put the class in there 
and we could have put it into the purchase order. Notice I didn't do that just to see it pull over to here. Um, or you can change the class settings. So if you're dealing with a lot of inventory for multiple locations, you might then say go to the edit drop down preferences and then go to the accounting up top company information. And when we turned on the classes, maybe it would be more beneficial under those circumstances to drive the classes by item so that you can then set up the item to be driving which class it would be going to rather than the account. So if you have a lot of inventory for different locations, that might be the preferred way to go. So, but in any case, now we have that. We're going to assign the class. If we do not assign the class, then it'll go into unclassified. I will see that in the financials. And then I'll go back in and I'll classify it out to the proper class. So I'm going to go ahead and say, this is going to be to B1. This is going to be increasing a bill, the accounts payable side of things for uh, B1. The other side then is going to be going to the inventory. So let's go ahead and save that. So we'll save it and close it and check it out by going to the reports drop down company and financial take a look at the balance sheet by class the balance sheet by class changing the dates up top and the customization from 010121 to 123121 and then we'll say okay so there we have that and then we have the accounts payable down here accounts payable double click in the accounts payable we just entered this bill so there's, there's the bill that we entered for inventory. The other side now going to inventory. So inventory up top, there's the inventory. And then if I check a look, take a look at the supporting reports for, for inventory, reports drop down, we want to go down to inventory. And then we can take a look at the inventory valuation summary, for example, as of 12.31.21. And that's going to give us our 50 units at 1,000 or 5,000. That 5,000 then matching what's on the balance sheet at the 5,000 uh, here. So if we, if we can, and obviously we, we can then pay the bill, which would decrease the accounts payable. We can continue that process. If we made another purchase, for example, if we, if we say purchase order again, this is gonna be purchase vendor B1. And now I'm gonna assign a class this time. Let's assign the class here. Say, I'm gonna say this is for B1. And then we'll, let's increase the date and say this is going to be for inventory item one and now, now let's say we purchase another 75 of them and so there we have that and then i'm going to say all right let's uh, save it and close it so we're going to say let's go ahead and save and close for the purchase order and now when I pull it over to receiving it, now we're imagining we're receiving it in the in the warehouse, receive inventory with a bill. Now we're going to actually record it. No, no transaction happened with the first one. We're going to put it into the accounts payable one. This is going to be purchase vendor B1. And then it's going to link to the purchase order, pulling over the information from the purchase order. We'll say, okay, there's the one. We want to pick that one up, checking it off, then okay. And so there we have it. So that looks good. So then we pulled over our items down below, inventory down below. We have the amount and now it pulled over the class because we put the class into the purchase order. So this will do the same process, increasing the accounts payable, other side going to inventory, saving it and closing it. And then we're going to go to the balance sheet. And once again, the accounts payable should be increasing here and our inventory increases here. Our supporting documentation for the inventory then uh, increases as well. We just got that one line item, but now we have 100 and, uh, 125 of them at this point. So then if we go back to the homepage, now if we were to sell some of those items, now we've got the inventory track for one business, uh, we should be able to line up the sales side of things by going to, let's say, uh, an invoice, invoicing. And let's say this is going to be cust customer number 12. And this is for B1 tab. So it's going to be B1's customer. I'm going to set them up. Set up B1's customer. I'll put B1 up top, but not B1 down here. So it doesn't show up on the invoice. Go back to the job. Uh, I'm sorry, additional information. Let's put B1 here in the business additional information. And OK. And so we'll tab through here. So I'm going to say that looks good. And then I'm going to say this is going to be item or inventory item number one. Let's say we have, we're going to sell like, uh, let's say 12 of them. And so there we have the, the 2,400. And, uh, and so notice once again, it didn't assign the class. Why didn't assign the class? Because the inventory item isn't driving it, even though 
the the accounts that are that are in the inventory item sales and cost of goods sold both are going to class b1 it's not pulling that over from from the inventory item here so if i don't include the class then it'll be it should still be okay because i'll see it in unclassified and i can just go back in there and reclassify it but uh we should also be able to see that it's b1 here b1 here and if we only have one of our businesses that are are driven by the inventory or are making sales for inventory then it would be easy for us to just simply uh, classify this into b1 which you can do here and we can do it up top or we and or we can do it up top there up here it'll apply to the entire invoice so so that's going to be the uh the process there again if you have a lot of uh, different areas that you have inventory you're tracking with then you possibly want may want to track by inventory item so the inventory item would be the thing that's driving uh whether or not the classes are here or you can use the customer you can choose the customer and set your customers up by class which could then be driving this instead of the accounts i think the accounts are good you work quite well for the expense side of things so there's pros and cons of course to those three options on what you use to drive the default setting for classes which is only available in the enterprise version so let's go if what, what's this going to do it's going to increase the accounts receivable it's going to increase the accounts receivable for b1 because we're selling b1 here and then it's going to be increasing uh the sales side of things so it's going to be increasing the sales for the 2400 then it's going to be decreasing inventory for the amount of the 12 times 100 which was the cost and then it's going to be recording cost of goods sold for the cost so it's going to be using a perpetual inventory system average cost flow method so and there's no sales tax we haven't added sales tax here so no sales tax so i'm going to say save it and close it and then let's check it out so we're going to go then all right let's go to the balance sheet we're going to say the accounts receivable has now gone up so our i'm yeah up oh, so it's going to be a b1 accounts receivable then is going is going up except that i went into the payable here so i'm i'm on the receivable side of things now so up here accounts receivable is going up so there we have the 2400 there other side's going to be on sales on the income statement so let's go to to the income statement reports drop down company and financial profit and loss by class changing the dates from 010121 to 123121 and then we have the sales here so i'm going to double click on that item and so we've got that increase 2400 here also closing this back out inventory is going down on the balance sheet so balance sheet item inventory is going down it's going to be in the class in in b1 and everything we're assuming is in b1 with inventory that's why we only have one inventory account at this point and and one class related to it so there we have the inventory going down by the 100 that amount isn't on the invoice because it's driven by the class and we don't want to show it on the invoice to uh, the customer but we know that is is it by class because we set up the class to be tracking the 100 dollars. so i'm going to close this back out close this back out other side's going to be on the profit and loss so the profit and loss here cost of goods sold at the 1200 on this side closing that back out we also note that on the balance sheet we can see the the 11.3 should be supported by the inventory valuation summary should have the 11.3 in it now as well so there's the 11.3 uh, there if i double click on this item uh, and change the detail from 010121 then we could see the activity that is happening within it two bills two purchases one invoice so i'm going to close this back out so that's going to be the standard process pretty it's pretty straightforward if we only have or you know it's the same as if we only had one business if we only have one of our either departments or businesses that are tracking inventory it's when of course we have multiple departments tracking tracking inventory that we want to apply to different classes that it becomes uh, more complex to be dealing with and we'll talk a little bit more about that in future presentations.